are here to celebrate the completion of the greatest dam in the world, rising 726 feet above the bedrock of the river and altering the geography of a whole region. This is an engineering victory of the first order, another great achievement of American resourcefulness, American skill, and American determination. It was kind of embarrassing how little I knew about dams when I started working on this film. I used to sneak inside their overflow tunnels once in a while to take photos of my friends skateboarding. So the extent of my knowledge about dams mostly had to do with how to avoid getting arrested while crawling inside them. Knowing what I know now, it's impossible for me to look at dams the same way I did a few years ago, or even rivers for that matter. Dams and hydropower represent a pivotal part of U.S. history. But just like any other resource development in the U.S., we took it too far. There are 75,000 dams over three feet high in the United States. That's the equivalent of building one every day since Thomas Jefferson was the president of the United States. Dams have been a common part of the American landscape for centuries. Most early communities were established on the banks of rivers so dams could be built to divert river flows to water wheels to run machinery. Around the time Edison had the light bulb dialed in, the first hydroelectric power was being generated on the U.S. side of Niagara Falls. At one point, nearly half the country's power was being fed by hydropower alone. As America's dependency on electricity grew, new dams are being built so fast that the engineering technology struggled to keep up. One of the worst disasters in U.S. history occurred in 1889 when Pennsylvania's South Fork Dam failed with no warning, taking 2,200 lives. The flood is still referred to as a natural disaster, despite the fact that there's really nothing natural about impounding a river behind a poorly constructed wall. In 1902, the Reclamation Act was passed by Congress to promote the settlement of the West through the development of irrigation projects to support small family farms. This well-intentioned mission devolved into the Bureau of Reclamation, whose short-sighted projects began a legacy of resource abuse, transporting and impounding absurd amounts of water to support unsustainable desert agriculture and sprawling urban development. The mighty waters of the Colorado were running unused to the sea.